is the empress tree invasive? And of course, anyone who's interested in this program tends to be an environmentalist. This is kind of the first question that comes to mind because none of us want to do any harm with this tree. What we're out to do is, is good. So it's a, it's a key question for us to answer. And I'm gonna go into it in, in a lot more detail than I have on previous presentations. So empress trees are from the genus Paulonia. And um, probably the best known species of Polonia is the Tomentosa. If you've ever Googled Polonia, this is probably the variety that you found. And this, um, this species of Polonia is on the USDA's invasive species list, which is an immediate warning bell. We're all like, okay, so that's not a good sign. Um, however, Polonia, like many other trees, comes in many different species, some of which are good guys and some of which are not so good guys. Uh, this is an example of a tree that most of us will be more familiar with, which is the maple. Um, certainly for those of us uh, uh, with a Canadian background, uh, we're very familiar with the maple. Um, the sugar maple, which is the one we all love, and I have a family member actually in upstate New York, every year she goes to her sugar maples and taps them for syrup. And uh, we all love the sugar maple, it's the, on the Canadian flag, and it's a non-invasive tree. The Norway maple, however, which is very similar to the sugar maple, is actually an invasive variety. Um, it's, I don't know whether Air Canada did this deliberately, but the Air Canada logo is actually the Norway maple, not the sugar maple. The sugar maple is on the Canadian flag. Um, you are, you're only really the specialists start to notice the difference in seed shape, leaf shape, that distinguish a sugar maple from a, from a Norway maple. So... Polonia is similar in the sense there's at least nine different species. Some people say 23, um, there's definitely at least nine, and they all differ in fundamental characteristics of flower shape, seed pod size, seed shape, um, leaf shape, many, many subtle and important differences between the species. And of all of these species, the only one that's invasive is the tomentosa. Most of them are non-invasive. And of course, World Tree, being an environmentally focused company, chooses only the non-invasive varieties. Usually the next question people ask at this point then is, okay, well, that's very interesting, um, but what are the origins of this tree? Um, the Asians have known about um, Polonia or Empress trees for literally thousands of years. Um, this is a kind of cool fact. So Wen King Hu, and I apologize to Wen King Hu if I said your name incorrectly, um, but according to all the documentation, Wen King Hu was buried in a Polonia coffin 2,600 years ago. Um, the, the flower, the blossom of um, the prime minister's seal in Japan has been, been the blossom of the tree for 800 years. And um, there are many, many myths in the Orient around um, empress trees related to the phoenix that you see here. This is a, a, a painting of a phoenix with an empress tree. And it's believed if you plant an empress tree, you will attract the good fortune of the phoenix. Now, okay, well, that's interesting, but what about in the United States? Because that's where we're, we're planting. Well, the very first fossils of Polonia actually come from Washington State and Georgia. Um, the, the picture on the right here, you can make out the veins there. This is a fossil of a Polonia leaf, millions of years old. It um, inhabited um, these areas very happily for a very long time and then got wiped out in North America during the ice ages about 40,000 years ago. Um, then approximately 200 years ago, um, 
the tree got reintroduced back into the United States. So this is kind of, well, I'm a little bit of a nerd, so I think this is cool. Um, so this is from a seed catalog from 1849. It's one of the first mentions of Polonia in the United States. And you can see there it's listed um, in their seed catalog. So we know that Polonia has been with us for at least 180 years. So if we had, if our concerns about invasiveness were correct, we would be thinking to ourselves, okay, 1849, we introduced some Polonia into North America. And then what we'd be seeing if this was an invader, so taking over the native plants, we'd expect to see more Polonia over the decades. And then over the centuries, a lot more Polonia. And then if our worst fears came true, the whole of the United States would be covered in Polonia by now. I don't know about you, but my personal experience was I'd never even heard of Paulonia until I came across World Tree, which for me was five years ago. Most of us are not familiar with this tree, which goes to indicate that this is not really a big invader. Um, this is something that's been confirmed very recently by a study funded by the USDA. This is a 2019 academic paper. And lots of words on the screen here, but what I wanna point out to you is that they did a study, a nine year investigation that included, by the way, Tomentosa, the so-called bad guy, Andy Longata and Fortunae. And they studied unmanaged plantations of Polonia. So unmanaged means not like world tree where we're tending and caring. These are just Polonia planted in the ground and then we look to see, you know, what does it look like nine years later? Nine years later, what they found was an average survival of 27.3%. Why that's interesting to us is it means that if we'd started with this many trees, nine years later, rather than being an invader, we're reduced to this many trees. It's like the opposite. So, you know, one of the reasons that um, Polonia is actually a very bad invader, it's not like if it was invasive, it'd be a very poor invasive species, is it's a sun lover. It thrives in the sun. In fact, our planting regime is all designed about getting the most sun in, in the trees. Most invasive species thrive in the shade. So Polonia left to its own devices with other other varieties, other ecosystems will get beaten out by the competing plants um, because it doesn't like to be in the shade. Another reason that it's actually um, has these qualities is that the seeds of the Polonia, so, so it's not surviving in the shade, but it's also not spreading very well because the seeds are extremely difficult to germinate. In fact, they're so difficult to germinate that we and our nurseries would never um, try to germinate from seed in our growth. And we use only tissue cultures for the growth of the trees. So um, we're basically sidestepping the seed production so that we can use these tissue cultures for propagation. So um, I hopefully, you know, inside of, you know, I've given you a lot of information here because it's been asked for a lot. Um, I wanted to give you some peace of mind. So in summary, the latest USDA research indicates that Polonia is non-invasive. It's very hard to germinate from seed. World Tree uses only premium genotypes of non-invasive varieties that we grow from tissue culture and we do so in managed environments. Um, on the other side of the equation, I wanna at this point point out the environmental benefits. So uh, we're actually using a tree with tremendous properties for carbon drawdown, uh, soil restoration. Not only does it provide nitrogen to the soil, it will actually clean up heavy metals from the soil. Those flowers are highly rich in nectar, so they provide great pollination services to 
and bees and, and other insects. And they provide shade for companion crops. So in places like Costa Rica, Mexico, Guatemala, and we're hoping to see more of this in the United States, we're seeing companion planting with coffee, alfalfa, um, cacao, all different other crops that we can intermingle with the empress trees. Um, and the empress tree is a particularly good friend to other plants.